Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the Opportunistic Trader. It's 1230 on October 16th, and we're joined by Standard Grains, Joe Vaklovic. How are you, Joe? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you know, we got some volatility, got the markets moving around, so that's good. Uh, you know, tell me what's going on in the ag market. Well, we're a little bit lower here today, but we have had a nice run higher recently in the corn market and also in the soybean market. I think you can probably attribute that to a few different factors. Um, first thing I think you've got to talk about is just seasonality of the markets in general. It's very, very common for those two markets to post significant seasonal lows um, around October 1st, give or take. And this year we posted the lows a couple of weeks early. It was mid-September. But I, I think that some of what's going on here has to do with just the, the seasonal tendency for these markets to move higher this time of year. October, historically speaking, is about the best month of the year in terms of performance for both the corn and soybean markets. And and there's a reason why. It's it's usually because, you know, we, we price in the crop size, we price in a lot of different things on the supply side fundamentally around that time of year. And and that's usually when news is about as at, at its most bearish. And we kind of dig our way out of it. And and that's what we've done here recently. Yeah, so I'm looking at the chart right now. Corn over the past four trading sessions, we're trading down at like 360 and then had to move up to almost 380. Was there any sort of catalyst for that move? Well, I think so. shorter term, aside from seasonality, I, I do believe that the weather here in the U.S. has, has played a role. Um, we are we've seen some harvest delays. This is a time of year where farmers should be out in the field and, and harvest should be running at a breakneck pace. And we're just not seeing that. We've had a lot of rain. We've had snow. We've had cold temperatures. This, this more specifically relates to the Western Corn Belt, the Northern Plains and the Southern Plains. So we're going to see some delays in those areas. And I think that some traders are maybe questioning uh, the quality of the crop, given these these or given the weather that we've seen, you know, has the the wet, cold weather hurt the quality of the crop? Could it hurt yields on a national basis? I suppose those are all question marks here, and, and maybe those are seen as being friendly inputs. Aside from that, uh, we did have a headline yesterday from USDA in their export inspections report that China actually um, we actually shipped a couple of cargoes of soybeans to China despite the tariffs. And it's not a significant amount, but it could be a significant headline. Um, if, if China decides that they're going to buy beans despite the tariffs, uh, that's something that could change the landscape of the market. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that it has yet, but it's, it's, a, it's a fresh news item that's probably a little bit friendly. Yeah. What about soybeans? You know, we got crushed in uh, June, July sort of range, and we haven't done a whole lot. We did trade down. I'm looking at Novi beans. We traded down to like eight twelve, and now we popped up. Uh, we almost got up to nine dollars a few days uh, yesterday. Uh, what's the story there? So, kind of similar to what I mentioned to start off. I mean, I think part of it is seasonal strength. I, I think part of it's just the fact that we priced in a very big crop <clears throat> very early, and and then recovered. And, and the recovery was was really fairly substantial. I mean, in, in terms of percentage points, was it like a 10% or 12% recovery from the low to, to yesterday's high? I mean, that's that's a nice rebound. I think in the grander scheme of things, we've still got a lot of problems with this market. Um, the, the lack of, of China as a big buyer is extremely problematic from a demand standpoint. Um, without, you know, I mean, China is the, the world's biggest buyer without them on board buying U.S. beans. It's just going to continue to be an uphill battle. I think it, it really is. Um, but USD, the USDA did give us some friendly info last week relative to expectations. Their, their increase to the crop size and, and their estimate and their estimation was not quite as big as what the trade had expected. Uh, some of the carryout projections were not quite as big as the trade is expect, had expected. So the news is still bearish, but not quite as bearish as we thought it might be. Yeah. Um, so do you think it's kind of more range here? If we were to get, get above nine bucks, it's kind of like a level to fade. And if we kind of get back down to low $8, it's kind of a level to buy. Yeah, I, I think I probably would go as far as to say that. Now there's, there are some wild cards here. This China thing is an enormous wild card, more so than maybe I've ever seen in these markets. Um, if for some reason we get to the G20 next month, and Trump sits down and makes a deal uh, with China, this thing could be off to the races in a hurry. And you could go from an $8 market to a $10 market very quickly. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's the way the market's trading right now, but it is possible. 
Um, it's, it's one of many possibilities. I think the more likely scenario here is that the market just kind of stays toward the lower end of where we've been over the last 10 years, which is in this eight to nine dollar range. Maybe you take a dip under eight bucks at some point in time if, if the fundamentals look really bad. But yeah, I don't know if we're going anywhere really fast without a change to that China situation. Yeah. What about the wheat market? We've been kind of stuck between five and six bucks as well. Didn't get the bounce in wheat that we kind of got in soy and corn. You know, in the grand scheme of things, I think that there are some friendly items in the wheat. We've had some overseas production problems, which could eventually steer some some business to the U.S., which our problem here in the United States is over and over chronically is that we just can't export wheat. We can't compete on the world market. And now that they've got some crop problems in Russia and in Australia and in some other places, We've got a little bit better story here. Now, keep in mind, wheat prices for, for the Chicago and the Kansas City, at least the winter wheat contracts, we're much, much higher than we were at this same point a year ago. So the market's already re reflecting that to some extent. But I, I do think you have some upside potential there if we start to see an improvement in export business. Exports generally make up about half of our demand base. And if we can see a, a, a sizable improvement there, I think that would really go a long way. Yeah. Uh, coming into year end, the more strategic traders, the shorter term traders, what are they looking at as possible catalysts to really start us to get to move in one direction or the other in some of these? And is there anything coming up in the, you know, or are there any big uh, like positions building on the smarter kind of spec kind of names that you speak to? It's kind of interesting. We've seen a big, sh a lot of what's happened in the corn and soybean markets has been short covering. Uh, big money managers had been very heavily short the corn market and and short the soybean market to a lesser extent on a relative basis. But um, as of yesterday's close, I think it was estimated that funds were actually net long the corn market for the first time in in quite a while, and and still net short the soybean market, but but a fairly modest amount. So we've seen a big shift there. Um, so I guess the question is this: over the the near term, do funds want to extend this thing and 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 put on a long corn position or, uh, or get more aggressive on the long side? Or is, is, was it just a short covering event and that's it? They're not going to want to put on a speculative long in this market. I, I really don't know. I mean, I guess your things to watch would be, I think the stock market and, and all this money kind of flowing is, is interesting. I think that the U S dollars is, is something to be monitored here. I'm just, I'm not sure if, if the, if the big money managers are going to want to be heavily long the corn market without a little bit better story here. Yeah, it's interesting you talk about the dollar. Um, relative, the dollar is, um, you know, against G10, the dollar hasn't done a whole lot, but emerging markets, which I know uh, the ag market has a lot of exposure to because that's where they, you know, have a lot of export uh, uh, partners, um, you know, the dollar strengthened dramatically. Is that something that uh, you think will play a big factor in the market coming into the end of the year? Um, so... As, as currencies relate to the grain markets, um, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people just watch the dollar index. Uh, and, and I think we've talked about this before, but really the more important things are, are the currency, currencies of our competitors versus the dollar on the global market. And it's very interesting. We've seen a sharp rally in the value of the Brazilian currency. And Brazil is, is you know, our biggest competitor for, for soybeans and corn on the export market. And this rally that we saw recently in the corn market and also in the bean market had a very, very strong correlation to the rally in the Brazilian currency. They both bottomed in mid-September and they both have been very strong since then. And I think that there's probably something to that. Um, it's, it's definitely a relationship that I, I tend to keep an eye on. And, and when you get these big moves, there, there tends to be some correlation there. If you, it's, it's really, um, if you would were to put those charts side by side, you'd see a very strong correlation between the, the Brazilian currency and, and the soybean market and the corn market. All right. Well, that's interesting. Well, you know, thanks a lot for the quick update on the ag market. Uh, you know, when you kind of see something big developing, let us know. Uh, it's pretty interesting right now. Uh, like we said, we had a really large move in Q2, Q3. It's calmed down a bit. That said, the last week was uh, pretty decent trading there. Um, so uh, let us know what you see. Yep, that sounds great. All right, thanks. That's Joe Vaklovac of Standard Grain.